a dark dystopian vision that is capturing the public's attention. Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale is now a cultural touchstone for readers and viewers. Her much anticipated sequel, The Testaments, is out tomorrow and is already on the short list for this year's Booker Prize and green lit for a series on Hulu. Jeffrey Brown sat down with Atwood recently in Toronto for a preview. It's part of our ongoing series on arts and culture, Canvas. Whose fault was it? I don't know. In a harrowing scene early in the TV series The Handmaid's Tale, young women are being forcibly re-educated for their subservient roles in the United States that has become a fundamentalist theocracy. One of them, played by actress Elizabeth Moss, is suddenly struck. The perpetrator in a surprise cameo appearance, none other than celebrated author Margaret Atwood. And we had to shoot it four times because she kept saying, hit me harder. I said, no, <laughs> no, I don't want to injure the leading leg. Yeah, Come on, yeah, give me a whack. Yeah. It was Atwood who started all this back in 1984, when she wrote her classic novel of a near-future takeover of the U.S. by religious zealots, who force fertile women into sexual servitude as child bearers. You will bear children for them. The new nation is called Gilead. What did you think you were doing then, at that time? Um, I thought I was getting in trouble. You thought it was going to get you in trouble because of the story? Uh, well, it answered the question, if the United States were to become a totalitarianism, what kind of totalitarianism would it become? Atwood, now 79 and author of more than 60 books, is Canadian, but traces part of her ancestry to early American Puritans. The Handmaid's Tale struck a deep and lasting chord for millions of readers the world over. We talked this summer in her Toronto neighborhood. You've got to be amazed by what the Handmaid's Tale has grown into as a phenomenon. It's out of control. Out of control. Yeah, well, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> well. Come back. <laughs> Not a chance. The story has been made into a 1990 film, an opera and ballet, a graphic novel, and reaching millions more. Mayday, is it? The Emmy award-winning hit Hulu series, which has completed its third season. Yes. Atwood served as a consultant, and with her blessing, the series moved well beyond her original ending. Now Atwood has written her own sequel, The Testaments, in part a response to her readers' continued interest. It was a lot of unanswered questions that yeah. either they kept asking or they kept making up answers to. There's a lot of things left hanging at the end of The Handmaid's Tale. So you decided to... Uh address that. And, uh, investigate it. The new book, set some 15 years after the previous ending, is told through three testimonies. Two young women and an older one, Aunt Lydia, familiar to viewers of the series as the most powerful woman in Gilead. Played by Anne Dowd, she's gone along with evil and for the young handmaids become their principal enforcer. But Atwood had her own questions. Is she really evil? Is she totally in evil. The question is, how do people end up in those positions? And remember when I was born, which is 1939, I was a war child. Mm -hmm. So I've always been pretty interested in those totalitarianisms, how people bought into them, how people rose in them, mm -hmm. you know, how they became members of the hierarchy. So you're always looking to these historical analogies, uh, huh? The series, as well as the book, and mm -hmm. as well as the testaments, follow one axiom, and that is you can't put anything in that doesn't have a precedent in human history. So yes, I'm always looking. It has to have happened somehow, or well, sometime? Well, in these books, yes, because I didn't want anybody saying you're just weird. Uh, somebody asked me on Twitter recently, how do you come up with this uh, the answer is, it's not me who comes up with it, it's the human race over the past 4,000 years. And that leads to the other reason for the sequel, The Times We're Living In Today, where Atwood and others again see women's rights under threat. If I had thought, let's write a sequel to The Handmaid's Tale of this kind in 1999, I would have said, why bother? We're not going there. Surely people are moving away from that. Mm -hmm but in the moment in which we now exist, that's not true anymore. 
So in 1999, you would have said, why bother? Yes. But in 2016, 17... I'm, I'm going to bother. I'm going to bother. It's time to bother. You, you can't ignore the fact that there are a number of regimes uh, that have come into power that have these kinds of ideas in mind. The thing they have in common is they all want to roll back women's rights. Atwood is no fan of Donald Trump, but doesn't see him in the world she's created. Trump is not a Gileadian leader figure. Uh, there are some other people kicking around on the U.S. political scene that would be much more like one of those figures, but he is not uh, that kind of figure. Gilead is a theocracy. We are probably pretty close to it in some states. You wrote that readers bombarded you over the years with questions, right? Yes. Is it a feminist novel? Is it yes. a warning? Yes. You're going to be asked the same thing of this, yes. new, of this sequel. Yes. In what sense would you say it is a feminist novel? It makes women front and center, mm -hmm. and it puts uh, reproductive rights front and center. Um, but it does not say all women are angelic beings who would never ever uh, do anything wrong because as we know from having been in grade four, that's not true. And in what sense is it a warning? Um, don't go there. Don't make those choices. Mm -hmm. Don't go there. Atwood's handmaids have become part of the political culture, popping up in protests. And the frenzy around the new book is intense, unusual for any novelist this side of J.K. Rowling and another Harry Potter book. See you in September. It includes a live event Tuesday in which Atwood and various guests will take part, which will be telecast in more than a thousand theaters around the world. And Atwood has been glammed up for features like this one in the Sunday Times of London Style magazine. You are in rare air for a novelist, for a I'm, writer. I'm in rare air for a, an old, bitty writer. <laughs> well, true. you are. I mean, it's sort of well, international celebrity yeah, air. Yeah, so a good thing that I'm yeah. old, because if this happened to younger people, it would probably ruin their life. You know, where do you go from here except down? Are you so, enjoying it? Of course I'm enjoying it. I would be lying to say otherwise. Yeah. You saw the pictures of me with hair extensions. Who wouldn't enjoy that? <laughs> Margaret Atwood's The Testaments is out tomorrow. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Toronto.